Around 40 people from the Deeper Life Bible Church in Gombe's Bogu District had gathered for a prayer meeting in this small church. Chainman Naguaba was leading the meeting on the evening of January 5th. We were praying and giving them prayer points. I started hearing the gun shoot from my right hand. As they started shooting, I saw that the people in my front, they are shooting everybody there. Chainman knew that if he stayed behind the pulpit, he would be shot down. Then I have to dive down on the ground to follow through the door. And as I followed through the door, I discovered they shot me on my stomach here. As I went out and I came out, I saw many people on the ground. I saw my wife, she had already died, carrying her baby of a year and six months on her hand. As I look at the baby, nothing happened to the baby. Chainma's 10-year-old son, Jeremiah, was also killed during the brutal attack by the three young men from the militant Islamic group Boko Haram that lasted just a few minutes. But that left the inside of the church riddled with bullet holes that were fired through the windows. This is a bullet. You can look at it. And open this place. This is a bullet and open this place. And then, you see this one is a bullet here. Dried blood in the church tells the story of the atrocities committed that night and the hatred towards Christians. Ten people would lose their lives as a result of the attack. Five people died at the church. Five others died as a result of their wounds. Over 20 other people at the prayer meeting were injured, some seriously, including Mijo Yakubu, who was there with his wife and two sons. We are about to round up the nation prayer. Then we just had, we begin to have a gunshot. It was serious. So me, I was at the front seat. Uh, the, so it took some seconds. I was still, uh, I stopped prayer, but I was still standing there. But something comes within me. Why are you standing here? So I, be, I, I took a step to run out through the door. It was through the door. The gun got me here. Mijo managed to get outside and run away from the church where he collapsed. After the shooting stopped, and despite being injured and bleeding, he'd also been shot in the stomach, he went back into the church to find his wife and two sons. When he saw all the injuries and those who had been killed, he went to get help. He was told that help was on the way and he should return to the church. They have sent some uh, uh, security men to that place. I should go back. So I began to come back. So when I came in, I came. I just passed to the church. I saw my son already on ground. He has died. So from there, I began to shout, begin to cry. Mijo's 24-year-old son, Meshach, was dead. The events that January night at the Deeper Life Bible Church would leave this young mother a widow. Naomi had stayed home with her infant son Elijah while her husband Suli had taken his niece and a neighbor's daughter to the prayer meeting. After the shooting rampage at the church, her niece, covered in blood, came to find Naomi and said, your baby's father is dead. 22-year-old Ogboise Amuchi was at the church that evening and witnessed the carnage that would take the life of her father Silas and her 10-year-old brother Gideon. Two other siblings were also shot but survived. The other boy, that is the youngest one, died on his way to the hospital that same day. But my dad died after two days, being Saturday. Then the other two, the girl was shot at her breast. As in, it's just as if the gun was passing by. But the other boy was shot on both legs. Agboise says it hasn't been easy to forgive those who ripped apart her family. As a Christian, you have to do good to those that did evil to you. Although I don't know them, all I know is that their reward is in heaven. In other words, God, not man, will administer the appropriate punishment for those who carried out the killings of her family members and friends. Agboise says the attack has had different effects on the people of the church. It made them strong for those that remain, and it made some scared. That was why some have to leave. 
The hope that I have is that I am very sure they are in a better place. Because for us, it is now left for us to strive to meet them. After all, everyone has to pass through death. Chinyere Okuli, whose husband pastors the church that was attacked, was there with her children. Her husband was out of town at a conference. Chinyere suffered a gunshot wound to the head, but survived, but lost many good friends that night. The way I feel is that I was telling God, hence they have come to your church and slap you. The time for you to rise and do something has come. Because one cannot stay in the house without serving God. How shall we live? Even how shall we evangelize? Somebody will even be in church. This thing has even caused some people not to be attending church activities since that time this thing happened. So this thing has strengthened me. But when I think of uh, this uh, brethren that died, he is open. But in another way, this is what God will tell me. It is better as they have died in the church of God. And we are praying. They did not die committing sin. That is another area that I will be comforted. Pastor Johnson Jaro had been married to his wife Halima for 25 years. They were sitting on the last row at the church with their four children when his wife was hit with a bullet. So I just see bleeding towards the chest. So the next thing that come to me, even if I carry out to hospital now, no doctor can attend to us. But they would first have to report the attack to the police. But the police were too afraid to immediately respond. So I leave her with the children, the children were just taking care of her. So before I come back, there's a delay when I report the issue to police. The police delay, they cannot come in time. Even when we are coming with them, they are free. They don't want to go into the matter so that they will not after. I tell them that the, the people that have done this thing, the mastermind that they have run, they are not there. Halima and her two sons, who were also shot, along with the other injured, would eventually be taken to the hospital. The boys would survive. Halima would not. Pastor Johnson says he will always remember what his wife said to him just hours before that final prayer. You have to put your trust in God. He said, don't look up men. Trouble will come. Pain will come. Difficulties will come. He said, look up unto God. The pain is still there up to now. The burning is still there. I just managed because of the grace of God that is carrying me to. Rather than the funeral service for the victims of the Deeper Life Bible Church massacre being a time of sadness and pain, it actually turned into a time of revival. Many came to the Lord during the service, and others rededicated their lives to Jesus Christ. In spite of the ongoing threats of violence by the Boko Haram, who insist that all Christians leave northern Nigeria, many believers here in Gombe City and throughout the state say that's not going to happen. No matter what, they're staying.